विवेक चूड़ामणि टिल नाउ शंकराचार्य टिल द एट वर्स हैज टोल्ड वाई वी शुड आफ्टर अटेनिंग दिस ह्यूमन बर्थ विच इज रेयर एंड ऑल्सो अटेनिंग द कंपनी ऑफ होली पीपल विच इज रेयर स्टिल एंड कमिंग टू नो अबाउट द पाथ टू सालवेशन और पाथ टू लिबरेशन मुक्ति वंस वी हैव दिस यर्निंग और लॉन्गिंग a desire to get liberated to stop the repeated birth and death once all these things happens then we have to ensure that we take to this path of spirituality take to the path of spiritual realization or self realization that is very important why because as he has told here and also as it is told in the upanishad that if you were not to do that then you will be like atmaha you will be a person who will be committing suicide in the ninth verse he says uddharet atmanatmanam magnam sansara varidhau yoga rudatvam asadya samyak darshana nishtaya उदरेत आत्मनात्मानम योगारूढ़ आसाध्य सो हैविंग आसाध्य अटेन्ड योगारूढ़ द स्टेट ऑफ योगारूढ़ योग आरूढ़ मीन्स क्लाइमिंग द पाथ ऑफ योग वन शुड उदरेत आत्मनात्मानम आत्मानम आत्मना उदरेत वन शुड प्रोग्रेस by the help of oneself that is how do we go beyond body and mind using body and mind and magnam sansara varidhau we are immersed in the varidhau varidhi or the ocean sea of sansara repeated births and deaths sansara which is of a cyclical nature which is of the nature of change so we are magnam we are drowned or immersed in this so that idea we should have so once a person has started progressing in yoga in the gita we find who is a yoga aruda who is a yoga aruda a person who has no attachment to the works a person who is not attached to indriya vishaya sense objects a person who is not attached to also actions karmasu anushajjate in gita it is told that a person is not attached to the actions also is not attached to the indriya vishaya or sense objects that person is known to be a person who is going on the path of yoga so just by going to a particular place getting a guru or by purchasing some books or getting some asanas which are available for sale you cannot go on the path of yoga but generally people do what they think that once you give up onion and garlic you have started the yoga path because it is very easy and go to a shop purchase some kind of cloth which is uh, which is having all that shri ram jai ram written and then you immediately become yogi but that is not how you become yogi how do you become yogi by giving up attachment to sense objects by giving up attachment to work what you do that is how you become yogi so having attained that it is not the destination but the path so having become like that also what you have to do you have to continue striving striving for what to understand that you are not the doer you are not the enjoyer to go beyond this idea of kartritva and bhoktritva you have to keep on striving even once you become unattached to sense objects indriya vishaya or to karma actions that is not the final destination you have to keep on striving after that shankaracharya here says uddharet atmana atmanam so shri ramakrishna says the pure mind is the guru once the mind becomes pure pure means what it has no desire 
So that is what here Shankaracharya is telling in different words. That once your mind becomes unattached to sense objects, means it has no desires, it becomes unattached to works, then you have to go ahead by yourself. That means mind itself will show you the way. Once your mind has become purified, your mind will show you the way. In the Patanjali Yoga Sutras also, it is told that Sattva Samshuddhi. Sattva Samshuddhi means what? Purification of the Sattva or the mind stuff. Chitta. So your mind also will be purified and then it will act like a mirror. It will show you the path to self-realization. And why you should do? Because you have got immersed yourself in this ocean. So you have to save yourself. You have to come out of this ocean. And in practical life, while dealing with the world, what would you do? Samyak darshana nishtaya. Till you realize the ultimate self or the higher self or the ultimate principle, ultimate truth or Brahman or God, you have to deal with this world. And how would you deal with that world? How do you do? Samyak darshana nishtaya. So you should have samyak darshana. You should have clarity of thought. So most of the times we don't have clarity of thought. What do we do? We try to link incidents which are not linked. We try to find parallels. We try to find connections where there are no connections. So somebody comes to your house and something wrong happens and you say that because this person came to my house, this such thing happened. What would that person do? It is your karma for love which you are suffering. But we do like that. So this is a big superstition that what if a person is born on a particular star, then if it is Ashtami, Rohini, that the star in which uh, Sri Krishna was born. If a person is born, then his maternal uncle will die. This is a big misconception. How can somebody's maternal uncle was born so many years back and he has brought his own load of karma? But that is what we think. That no, this fellow has born. So like Krishna, when he was born, Kansa was killed by Krishna. Similarly, this fellow also will be killed. And all kinds of stupidity we perpetrate. Why? Because we don't have Samyak Darshana. We don't have clarity of thought. If you have not already read, please read this book, The Art of Thinking Clearly. It's a wonderful book by a German. Art of Thinking Clearly. It is translated into English. Rolf Dobelli. And he gives 99 examples very small book, small chapters, he gives 99 examples of how we do illogical thinking. We think all illogical thing and yet think that we are very logical. So that is what? Samyak darshana, clarity of thought. Our problem is always with lack of clarity. So when you have nishta, dedication to samyak darshana, clarity of thought. If you have dedication to clarity of thought, then you will be able to attain. So, you know, what should I do? What should I not do? If I do this, then I will be taken to my goal of self-realization. If I keep away, if I don't do this, then I will be taken to my goal of, I will go nearer to my goal of self-realization. If I do this, I will go farther away from the goal of self-realization. So that we have to understand. So morning you meditate for one hour and evening also for one hour and the rest of the day you do all kinds of things and then people say that I don't get concentration meditation. How will you get concentration? Because the whole day you have been undoing what you did in those two hours, morning and evening. So you have to, this is not just a watertight compartment, it is a continuous process and that is why Samyak Darshan and Ishtaya. You should know how to deal with people. You should know how to talk with people. You should know how to behave in this world. Just like Sri Ramakrishna so beautifully said that the housemaid, she works in the house and calls that boy as her own boy. But she knows that this is not my son. My son is in my house, in my village. But still she has that. So like that we have to work. How much mind now neuroscience says that mind has tremendous capacity. And we, we know that for a fact. So we can actually do even very technical, very mentally 
intense actions without giving much mind to worldliness. So, Sri Ramakrishna says, 16 parts of mind give 15 parts to God and one part to work. We can do that very easily, only we don't try. So, if you, once you have attained the state of Yoga Ruda and then you, uh, because you are immersed in this ocean of sansara, you have to come out of itself by yourself. Nobody will help you. Guru can only show you the way, but you have to do it yourself. And that you will be able to do if you have devotion, if you have dedication to Samyak Darshana, the clarity of thought, right thought, Darshana, vision, Samyak, proper. So it is something similar to Buddhist philosophy where you have eight Samyak uh, things, means proper conduct, proper speech, etc. In Buddhism we talk about that. So similarly here Shankaracharya talks about Samyak Darshana. Then he says, Sanyasya Sarva Karmani Bhava Bandha Vimuktaye Yatyatam Panditaihi Dheeraihi Atma Abhyasa Upastitaihi So he says Panditaihi, a person who is Pandita. Pandita means a person who is a, just not just a scholar but a person who knows what is real and what is unreal. A person who knows what is correct and what is incorrect. So if you go to any university in India and also across the world, wherever Indian philosophy is taught, you, you will find many people who have done PhD in Vedanta, people who have done PhD in Brahma Sutras. They have studied various commentaries of that Brahma Sutras. They know so many things. Many times I, I get surprised. Oh, so they, must, they know so many things. They have studied so many things. But what do they do it for? For money. For money. They do it for their lust and greed. They do it for that. So, I remember once when I was a Brahmachari just joined the uh, Chennai Sri Ramakrishna Mat and there um, the present president was the president at that time also Swami Gautam Anandaji and he had arranged for classes and we requested him that Maharaj we should have some class on a uh, scripture some uh, some uh, text philosophical text of vedanta because some people want to study it so there is this text called vedanta paribhasha so that vedanta paribhasha was being taught to us by a teacher who was a great sanskrit scholar who is a great sanskrit scholar first day he taught us vedanta paribhasha second day he taught us third day he comes and he starts the class but he says maharaj what to do in my house, the wife and me, always fighting. The constant fighting going on between me and my wife. So, we said, okay, probably this person is disturbed. We will also do some kind of counseling. So, we just listened to what he was saying. The next day, again the same thing. So, then there was no Vedanta Paribhasha. Then it turned out to all Paribhasha of his household affairs. That is what he was teaching us. Then we ourselves went to Gautamandi and said, Maharaj, we don't need this class. Because... <laughs> Because this class is going nowhere. So why? Because that fellow, he, that person, he understood that no, these Swamis are there. And he was feeling kind of, you know, uh, jealous. Or he was kind of feeling inferior to complex. These people have left all their health and home and are so happy. And I am, I have married and I am teaching them Vedanta Paribhasha. What, what Vedanta do I know? So that is what Swami, uh, Sri Ramakrishna says. That these scholars, they are like, those birds which fly atop and then they see down at all those rubbish to eat. If you go to uh, some, like if you go to Almora uh, while going, the Almora whole garbage has been put outskirts, in the outskirts of the city. So you will see all these kites flying up. But their sight is where? On the garbage, on the rubbish. So not like that. Not that Pandita. That Pandita is not being referred to by Shankaracharya. Here Pandita means a person who knows what is right, what is wrong. A person who knows what is real and what is unreal. A person who knows what is permanent and what is impermanent. So, then another word, another adjective used is dhiraihi. So, panditaihi means by panditas or wise people and also by dhiraihi. Dhira. Who is a dhira? A person who has a steady mind. So, dhiyam rati. That is iti dhira hai. Dhiyam rati iti dhira hai. That is the explanation of this word dhira. 
Rati means what? One who gives or one who has. Giving. Rati means giving. It's a verb which means Rati giving. So one who gives D. D means what? It is not ordinary kind of intelligence but it is spiritual intelligence. So one who has this spiritual intelligence is called Dhira. So that person will be like whom? Kalidasa says in a place that that person will be like a person who is not disturbed by all sense objects. So you keep. So the Adhira, if Adhira gets diabetes, how he will be? He, you keep all sweets in front of him or her and she will be totally unperturbed. So Adhira, if that Adhira is a diabetic, no desire to eat all these things. But ordinarily a diabetic, if the moment you see sweet, immediately they want to. So this is Dhira. So a person who is steadfast, a person who is patient, a person who is not disturbed by sense objects, by the cravings of the senses. So what do, what should that Dhira do? do? Sanyasya sarva karmani bhava vanda vimuktaye. That Dhira person, a person who has got control over one's mind should sarva karmani sanyasya, give up all actions. Give up all actions and bhava bandha vimuktaye and should yatyatam, should strive, should struggle for vimuktaye, getting free from what? Bhava bandha, from the bondage of this bhava, being, coming into being, taking birth and again dying. Bhava means what happens or what comes into being. So bhava bandha, this being comes because of ignorance. Because of ignorance, being comes. So that person should, once that person has got the steadfast mind, which is very difficult to obtain, that person should do this vimuktaye, bhavabandha vimuktaye yatyatam. Should try to strive for getting free from this uh, bond of birth and death. Bandha, bond of birth and death. And how will that person do? By giving up all works. Means work with desire. Selfish work. Work with desire. So now, here a big problem comes. When we see the Vedas, Vedas are supposed to be the scriptures of Sanatana Dharma. When we see the Vedas, what do we find? We find that the Vedas say that you should work. You should perform this ritual, you should perform that ritual. When you see other books of code of conduct for what a householder should do, the list of duties are given. A householder should do this, 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 this. Now here Shankaracharya says that Sarva Karmani Sanyasa. You give up all this. So is it escapism? Is it escapism? So why should a person give up all works? So the idea is this is not told to everyone. It has been told to Pandita or the Dhiraha. That means a person who has already lost attachment to desires. So Sri Ramakrishna very nicely says, I don't know whether it happens nowadays also, but at least when he was telling that in the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, we find that when a woman becomes pregnant, gradually her works are reduced. Now probably that would not be the case because the old woman does not stay in the house. They are all separate. They are in Vridhashrama and this person is here. So, so when uh, one person gets pregnant, slowly every work is reduced. So Sri Ramakrishna gives that illustration that when you give up attachment to desires, automatically your all work in the world will get reduced. So this is being told for whom? It is being told for people who do not have that desire. Why? Because if you have desire and still you give up work, what will happen? You will sit in one place and your mind will wander all over the world. It will go to Mars also. Uh, because if satellite can go, before that mind can go. It, it will go to all places in the galaxy and it will wander. Why? Because you have not controlled your mind. You have not got mastery over your mind, your desires. But the person who has got that, he can do or she can do. And what should that person do after giving up all the actions and trying for bhavabandha vimukti, that means freedom from this bondage of birth and death, that person should atma abhyasa upastitaihi. That person should commence or start the practice of Atma. Practice of realizing the Atma. How, do, how does one practice realization of Atma? 
and in one place it is told tat kathanam tat chintanam constantly think of that constantly talk about that and tat prabodhanam and also anyasya tat anyonyam tat prabodhanam you constantly tell others also about that that is why in taitri upanishad we get this beautiful statement swadhyaya pravachana abhyam ma pramaditavyam you should not default pramaditavyam ma should not you should not stop swadhyaya pravachana abhyam from swadhyaya from study and also from telling adhyayana adhyapana you study adhyayana and also adhyapana you teach why because if you teach you are not teaching other people you are reminding yourself like in english there is a proverb teaching is twice learning so you are reminding yourself you are not teaching others so why am i telling this not for i don't know whether you will get any benefit of that but i will get this benefit of thinking about the atman so atma abhyasa means what tat shravanam tat chintanam tat kathanam so in traditionally we say shravanam mananam nididhyasanam so first you learn first you hear then as sri ram krishna says just like a cow once it takes something then it sits and then keeps on chewing whole day till chew so it has taken the store wherever it got food it has already accumulated and then keeps on storing so many people do that they have this kindle or they have this ipad or some tablet wherever they go they say oh give me this ebook give me that and they load their whole ebook with lectures and everything ebook reader or the tab everything lectures and then we keep on listening to that hmm. so like that you put everything inside get everything shravana so this is the modern way of shravana get everything into your device and then sit in one place and listen and think of that constantly again and again and again think of that so that atma abhyasa upasthitaihi one has to practice one has to start upasthitaihi one has to start this atma abhyasa why should one start because then and only then desires uh, not having desires will make any sense otherwise you don't have desire and you are like a stone or a wall so that doesn't make any sense you have to realize your true self then shankaracharya says chittasya shuddhaye karma natu vastu upalabdhaye vastu siddhi vicharena na kinchit karma koti bihi vastu means your true self the ultimate principle ultimate truth brahman or ultimate reality so karma is for chittasya shuddha it is for the purification of the chitta or mind karma is for the purification of the mind why because if we were to suppose that karma brings us realization of atman then realization will of atman will have a cause whatever has a cause will perish it will perish because once you remove the cause the effect also will not be there if there is no clay there will be no pot if there is no milk there will be no curd so you should not have a cause this ultimate reality cannot have a cause because it is ultimate it is the only reality which is not going to change and which will not perish which will be always present so what is going away ignorance is going away where does this ignorance reside it resides in our mind because mind is also material so mind has to go away complete dissolution of mind should happen there should be no mind there should be no thought when that mind will go away then automatically that particular if, if in cow dung there is a diamond say kohinoor ka hira in gobar so what will happen in gobar you will not be able to see the sparkle of the kohinoor ka hira and, but the moment you remove gobar kohinoor ka hira will sparkle you don't need to polish kohinoor ka hira you don't need to polish it diamonds are not polished they are only cut see they are not polished because they have that sparkle inside so you don't need to polish it only you need to remove the impurity or the dirt from top of it similarly here our mind we have to remove the impurity impurity in form of in the form of desires or in the form of samskaras impressions which are also desires which have come by our past actions so that we have to remove and that only is the goal of doing action but how will you remove that 
not by doing action with motive, not by doing action with desire. That will only create more impurity. If you have to remove your impurities in the form of desires from your mind, then you have to do action without desire. You have to do action without any motive. That is what Swami Vivekananda says, that you need not believe in any God. You do not need to believe in any philosophy. You don't need to believe in anything. Just do unselfish action and you will attain the same goal as any yogi attains. So that is what he says, Karma Yoga, which was there in the Gita, which is there in the Gita, he brought it out. So how do we, Natus Bastu Upalabdhaye, it is not for the attainment of Brahman, but for the attainment of the purification of mind. And Vastu Siddhi Vicharena Nakinchit Karma Koti Bihi. Nowadays it is very common to see different photographs in internet or WhatsApp or mobile. So they will say, look at this like this and you will see a young lady. And look at this like this and you will see a old woman. So it's a very common photograph, very old psychological photograph. So when you see like this, what do you do? You don't change your eyes. You don't change the picture. You don't change anything. All you do is maybe you will just shift your face like that and again see like that. So what you are doing is you are just changing your perspective. Your whole perspective changes. So Holy Mother was asked what happens to a person when somebody attains realization and she says does he grow two horns? No. He, his idea changes. That's all. Your world view, your perspective changes. The same thing you are seeing like when we were children we were seeing the same thing but then we had a different idea of it altogether. Now we see the same things and we have a different idea. Our perspective has changed. So Siddhi comes only from Vichara. Means you have to change your perspective. You have to change your idea, your conception. Vastu Siddhi Vicharena Na Kinchit Karma Koti Bihi If you keep on working, 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 by working itself we will not get anything. You have to have this. How is it that a person, there are so many kitchens in the world and there are so many people who uh, boil potatoes and fry tomatoes. Does anybody become a saint? Nobody becomes a saint. But there was this wonderful person called Brother Lawrence who all his life, what did he do? He boiled potatoes and fried tomatoes and he became a saint. Why? Because he thought that he was doing it for the God. He believed that he was doing it for God. So by your perspective, you can change. So Holy Mother was there and she used to cut vegetables and feed devotees. So you may think all our lives we also have done this cutting vegetables and feed our family and we nothing has happened to us because of the perspective. It is not because of the work but because of the perspective. So if you just do work like that uh, there are this chakki ka wo kya? bell Haan. Haan. so you have this uh, person oil machine which uh, Sri Ramakrishna gives it as an example that is constantly grinding but it does not understand anything and in another uh, bharasya vahi so a uh, donkey if you load it with sandalwood what it will be knowing it will know only about the weight it will not know about the quality of the sandalwood so similarly your perspective has to change and then if you do a work so when people do japa why is it that people do so much japa and nothing comes because you are not doing japa the proper way you are just doing it mechanically you are saying today i did 10000 oh how much oh, only 5000 i did 10000 Ah, just like people say, where do you go? Balram Mandir, I go to Institute of Culture. So a great person. Oh, where do you go? Some small center you go. Khetri, I to Delhi. So means immediately, Delhi means you become a great person. So that is the idea. So your perspective is wrong. So Vastu Siddhi Vicharena. It is only through changing your perspective, bringing understanding into you that Buddha, for example, he needed only four sides. He saw a old man, a deceased person, a dead body and a monk. And his whole life changed. So, na kinchit karma koti bihi. Om shanti shanti shanti.
हरि ओम तत्सत